hey best friend and welcome or welcome back to advice and adventures so today we're going to start episode four of our dating a narcissist series in our first episode which i'll link here we just described 15 things or 15 characteristics or red flags to look for the narcissist in our second episode where uh we talked about the narcissist relationship cycle and in our third episode we talked about breaking up with a narcissist so today um I'm going to be reading people's testimonies. Yes, I said testimonies. Of dealing with a narcissist. The question on Reddit was, people who have dated a narcissist, how does it feel? What does it feel like to date a narcissist? Yeah. At first, amazing. Because they're in a phase where they get to put on a show in exchange for affection and attention. They're literally in their prime. The most charming, the most thoughtful. Love bomb, love bomb. <laughs> but once they feel that they've got you where they want you, and you, you feel yourself in armor, they, the whole facade wears off. Remember I told you that their that face, you know, when you meet them, you meet the representative, right? You meet the representative, and then after a while, you know, the mask comes off. By this time, you generally trust them and you give them the benefit of the doubt because they've been so good to you. It's fake, boo-boo. And then you're vulnerable to manipulation, gaslight, and emotional abuse. You start to second guess your gut, distrust, dist, uh, distrust your loved ones who express concern. That's why be careful of, about isolation. Do not let them isolate you in the beginning, in the middle, nor the end, okay? Because if you get isolated with a narcissist, you're on an island by yourself with like Michael Myers. That's like, I'm still afraid of Michael Myers to this day. Yes, I am. And nobody wants to be isolated on an island with Michael Myers. Just put that out there. Anyway, um, it feels terrible by that point, but you don't trust yourself. And think that leaving will cause you to miss out on the feelings you had when you first met. When you first met, you were you were being bamboozled. It was fake. It wasn't real. Run, 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 run. When you first met, this is why the love bombing is first. This is why love bombing is first. Because guys, I'm telling you, if you were being love bombing properly, you're going to second guess everything in your life. And then you're going to lean and depend on this one person for clarity in life. It's like this one person is going, you're going to get gassed with, you're going to get manipulated and then guess what, it's going to circle back to love bomb. It always circle back to love bomb. Freaking hate love bomb. Anyway. From then on out, the only time you experience those feelings again is if they get caught out on something or I need to think of something creative for the F word. F word up and have to make it up to you again. And then they usually find a new person to start the cycle over all over again with. Or they just torture you and start it over with you. Just, yeah. Page two. Exhausting. In every way you can imagine. Your body is exhausted. Your brain is exhausted. Your emotions are exhausted. Your tears are exhausted. Eventually, just breathing is exhausting when you're around them too long. They trick you and make you feel great at first by mirroring you and your behavior. That is an important one to note. That's important to note. They say that you have the same interests and make it like they're the perfect soulmate, but in reality, they're just pretending to be you right in front of you and get you to fall in love with them. Or what happened to me, uh, I, one of my favorite movies is Their Eyes Were Watching God with Halle Berry and Michael Ely. I watched it in 10th grade. Uh, shout out, Miss Pearson. Um, and it just always stuck with me. And Michael Ely's character was Tea Cake. And I fell for this person. And we watched Their Eyes Were uh, Watching God before I fell. And he mirrored everything TK did because he knew that's what I wanted. I mean, I told him some stuff too, but he literally mirrored everything TK did. Be careful about spilling your secrets. Um, if you are, uh, oh, at the same time while they steal all the good qualities about you and claim them as their own, they project 
projection remember i told you project all of their negative qualities onto you and blame you for everything that they say and do never the blame if you are kind generous and loving they will tell you that you are mean selfish and hateful those are words don't believe their words okay believe what you know about yourself every single negative thing they say about you is truly about themselves they are really uh talking about themselves but blank uh, but they're blaming you for it talking to them is exhausting <laughs> arguing with them is exhausting trying to get them to compromise is exhausting oh my gosh trying to get them to help you do anything at all is exhausting and it is <laughs> if you if you truly dated a narcissist oh my god i know you like yup she preaching a word it, it's to the point you find yourself doing everything alone but they also want you to do everything for them also they want you to cater to them you're doing all the cleaning and all the workload because it's too exhausting to try to get them to help you with anything because you don't want to have another GD argument exhausting is a great description she ain't lying or he ain't lying I don't know who it was, but they ain't lying. All right, the third one. Emotionally draining and exhausting. <laughs> Sensing a theme here. Constantly doubting yourself and feeling like everything is your fault because they're never to blame or admit when they are wrong. I told you, in my relationship, it took me two years to get an apology. Two years not two days not two months not two two years to get an apology because he was never wrong according to himself uh they always make you feel like they are that you are you're being a bad partner and that they are being the perfect partner to you even when they treat you like sugar honey iced tea in arguments if you defend yourself they tell you to stop acting like the victim or something similar to that and usually i'm gonna tell you to look out for this usually they're the one being playing victim okay so make sure you watch out for that because narcissists know how to play victim they're good at it they're good at playing victim oh where was i they never believe that they have done anything wrong and they t and, hold on. and everything bad they do is justified as you apparently deserve for uh, deserve it as you hurt them first they twist arguments <sighs> y'all I promise you I didn't do any of this until after I had already done all my three videos before I looked this up I was like what can I do for my fourth video like and it came to me people have stories i want to put their stories out there and it's like yes <laughs> they twist arguments you've had <laughs> they twist arguments you've had into making them seem like they are the better person and tells everyone about how bad you treated them they're playing the victim <laughs> When in fact it's the opposite. When you do do when you do do uh, something, when you do do something wrong, they constantly bring it up to make you feel oh, they constantly make you bring it up and make you feel bad and apologize again and again just to make themselves feel better. Yes, when you do something wrong, apologize for it once and get over it. Do not constantly apologize over and over again. Don't you do that? Don't you do that because that's doing nothing but feeding the ego. And even if they say, well, you must not be uh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. You must not feel remorse or guilt or anything. Let me tell you something. I apologize for that once, right? Right or wrong? I've already apologized. I'm not going to keep apologizing for it. Done. Okay? All right. Constantly downplaying, denying or gaslighting you over whatever hurt they caused you. If they did something wrong, it's either happened was a funny mistake remember those little jokes and jabs and stuff uh or was your fault and you deserved it god forbid you make the smallest mistake 
the smallest mistake it does not matter how small it is it does not matter how small it is the smallest mistake it is made out to be the worst betrayal something did intentionally to hurt them and become it becomes the reason why they treat you like sugar honey iced tea every time they're called out for it i mean every time they're called out for it it comes it's constantly losing your mind feeling like they're overreacting even when you can logically see they're abusive and a major blow to the self-esteem because if you just learn to be perfect and do everything right maybe they will stop treating you so crappy that's a whole lot of manipulate this is why people need therapy once they leave a narcissist that sentence right there is constantly losing your mind feeling like you're overreacting when you can logically see they're abusive and a major blow to your self-esteem because if you could just learn to be perfect and do everything right maybe they will stop treating you so shitty i'm gonna just say the word this is why people need therapy once they finish dealing with narcissism this is why this Number five, or page five, or testimony five. We're gonna go with testimony five. You feel like you simp you are simply an item on a checklist, and most of the times you are. Once you once you stop the chase, most of the time it's kind of over right there. Once you stop, once you give in, once you let those walls down, most of the time that's when it's over. You uh, feel like you're simply an item on a checklist. And once you are firmly in place, they move on to the next item. In my last video, I was referring to the the people that, well, you guys, I'm sorry, but as possessions to a narcissist. Um, you feel like nothing uh, that happens to you, including your feelings, matter to them one bit. You could be very upset and they're, oh well, let's talk about me for the rest of the day. Or, like I experienced, let's not talk for the rest of the day. I'm gonna give you some good old fashioned silent treatment. That's That was my experience. That, that good old fashioned silent treatment is what, yeah. You feel horrible about how they cheat, lie, steal, gaslight cheat some more behind your back and then try to make it seem like it's somehow your fault when you call them out on it yeah it's your fault i cheated it's your fault i was in bed with this person it's your fault one thing led to another you feel like running away when they get into hyper rage over something that's no big deal and then wonder why you are so upset you feel bad when every person you know, even some of their best friends, warn you about them and tell you the GTFO of the relationship. Now, you know you're dealing with somebody dangerous when their when they're friends and family tell you, baby, run, run, run. But, no, I love him. I, it, it, it. That's the love bomb stage. It's not even your fault. I've been there. So I can make fun of us. I've been there. It's not your fault. It's not. It's totally exhausting. Every day is some new drama they invent. Our last one. It's incredible at first. Love bombing. God. This focus. This person is focused solely on you, and it's incredibly devoted to you. They are all about you. They shower you with gifts and words of affection and usually you're too young and naive at the time to understand what's truly going on. Then they slowly begin to change. They pick arguments over things that literally don't matter at all. Yell at and chastise you for the smallest infractions. Every problem they have is ultimately your fault. And the narcissist is never wrong. Talking to them always turns into a fight, and fighting with the narcissist is emotionally draining. We've heard draining a lot and exhausting a lot in this video. Eventually, they dump you and move on to their next victim, and you're left trying to fit the shattered pieces of your life back together. Baby, I, if they dump you, consider yourself blessed. Consider yourself blessed if a narcissist dumped you and moved on to another person. I know it doesn't feel like blessings, but let me tell you something. It's a blessing. 
if they went on about their business, that's a blessing because the the alternative is 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 tragic. It's something where you're gonna have to go through therapy. You can't go. The alternative, you can't go and have a few drinks with your your your, your girlfriends and, and talk about it and slowly be okay. The alternative, you're going to need some form of therapy. Okay. I hope these uh, six situations or six testimonies, as I like to call them, help you out uh, in some way, shape, form, or another. <sighs> I think I'm gonna do this again. I kind of like this. You know, just letting everybody know you're not alone. You're not experiencing it. Like, it helped me too because I'm not alone. Like, I didn't just experience it. I wasn't the only one. So, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. Share it with somebody who needs it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.